This week on Jersey Matters, the New Jersey governor's race is now set with a big primary win by Republican Jack Cittarelli. We'll talk with the former assemblyman about his campaign to try and unseat Governor Phil Murphy. Congressman Chris Smith wrote that the COVID-19 virus came from a Wuhan lab in China over a year ago. Now there is evidence to support his claim. An historic Asbury Park Church holds its last mass to a packed house of parishioners who came to say goodbye. And we'll take a Jersey jaunt to the battleship New Jersey. Welcome to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Menti. Republican Jack Cittarelli easily wins this week's primary election to face off against Democratic Governor Phil Murphy in the fall. Here's my interview with the freshly crowned Republican gubernatorial nominee, former Assemblyman Jack Cittarelli. Thanks for joining us today, Assemblyman. And first off, congratulations. Uh, Let's get away from the politics for a second. This was, you've been running for five years. How did you and your family celebrate? Uh, we went home, just kind of sat down and talked about things, Larry. But uh, the evening went up until almost midnight. So when we got home, it wasn't too much talk. We went right to bed. How did it feel for you? Well, it felt great, uh, Larry. But listen, we worked extremely hard over the past 16 months during all the time that I've been an official candidate. And um, we reached the maximum amount of um, fundraising with the $7.5 million. We felt very confidently that we were going to win and we were going to be right around 50%. So in a lot of ways, you're just very, very happy with the outcome. But in a lot of ways, it's exactly what I expected. Yeah, there was so much talk that it was close. Some people were saying you're behind in the polls. You won by a, a pretty big margin. So I, I think that sent a message to a lot of people about your campaign and about how you reacted to some competition. I understand that you got a phone call from the governor. How did that go? Uh, I received a text uh, from the governor uh, okay. saying, see you on the campaign trail. And I said, you bet, Bill, looking forward to it. So let's talk about the campaign now against the governor that you've been getting ready for for some time. What will the tone of the campaign be? How, how, what are you going after on his record? We're certainly going to talk about taxes, oh, Larry. Um, no state has the tax burden that New Jersey has. In fact, a recent National Accounting Journal says that New Jerseyans over their lifetime pay more in taxes, nearly 50% of their income, more in taxes than any other state. And the even worse news is states 49, 48, 47, right through 43 are not even close. New Jersey pays hundreds of thousands of dollars and more in taxes over their lifetime than the residents of any other state. You know, we have an interview coming up with Ashley Koning from the Rutgers Eagleton poll, and she did the approval numbers for Phil Murphy. And he's still hovering over 50%. He's dropped a lot, but he's still hovering over 50%. The interesting thing is when it comes to taxes, only 7% approve of what he's doing. And I thought that was the number one issue. So I was wondering how he hovers above 50% if he's only a 7% approval on taxes. Can you explain that? I think a lot of people are still looking at the governor in terms of his handling of the pandemic. And uh, But at the same time, this is what a gubernatorial campaign is really all about. So for the next five months, we're going to put the spotlight over his handling of the pandemic because we do think he's failed us in nursing homes on Main Street and with our public schools. But at the same time, Larry, it's always been about taxes, property taxes in particular. And on that issue, his record is abysmal. It's a failure. So that's number one for you, going after him on taxes. Is it because you believe by November, the pandemic will be in our rearview mirror? I believe it's already in the rearview mirror in some ways, Larry. But that doesn't mean, for example, that people are going to forget or we're going to let them forget what's happened in our nursing homes on Main Street and with our schools. His record during the pandemic is a failure in, that, in those respects. It's interesting that you went through a Republican primary and you were blasted by some Republicans for not embracing Donald Trump enough. Now you're going to go up against Phil Murphy, who calls you a Trump Republican. You, you can't win in this. You know what that tells me, Larry? I'm right where I need to be. 
I was true to myself all through this primary. I didn't do the old pivot one way to win the primary, pivot another with a general. I've been true to myself. One thing that the people of New Jersey don't like is BS, and I've never been BS. A lot is made about what you're going to do or what any candidate is going to do, especially when they run for an executive office on their first day. Do you have a plan for your first day? Should you win? You bet I do. We need a new school funding formula. That's why taxes, property taxes are out of control in this state. So job number one is a new school funding formula, and it'll be reflected in my first budget, which will take effect on July 1st. And the second thing is changes to our tax code to make New Jersey a better place to do business. New Jersey has the worst business climate in the nation. No one wants to start a business here. Businesses are leaving every single week. We've got to make New Jersey a better place to do business, to create the jobs that people are looking for. That's job one and job two. To do that, you need allies in the legislature, in the assembly, and in the Senate. Do you feel like you have them? Well, first of all, we're going to have a Republican majority, Larry. I shouldn't be seeking the nomination unless I believe that. But if by chance it's a Democratic majority, I've always had a good re working relationship with the Democratic leadership because they've always known that I'm about the policy. The answer is in the policy. Let's put the right policies place here in New Jersey. And one other thing, I love competition. Let's have a competition. But the day after the election, it's time to govern, and I will do so in the best interest of all New Jerseyans. Have you thought about a lieutenant governor yet? You bet I have. And? You're on the short list, Larry, but I'll be releasing that. <laughs> I talked to you once before about this, and I know that one of the things that you're pushing is that we should have a more business-friendly New Jersey. Are business leaders on your list, near the top of your list? They certainly are. So- uh, but I'm excited in the coming weeks, in the coming days, I'll be announcing the, the new state chair here for New Jersey. And uh, right behind that will be who my lieutenant governor will be. And again, I'm excited for New Jersey. This is going to be a lot of fun and it's going to be a great competition. And I'm confident it's going to work out well for Jack Cittarelli and the Republican Party come November. Oh, your, your ads were wonderful during the primary, especially the ones introducing you again to people in New Jersey. Are you running them again or do you have new ads coming? We'll have new ads coming, but the themes will be very much the same. It's all about these Main Street issues here in New Jersey, pocketbook issues, uh, kitchen table issues, and just reminding everybody that Jack's a real Jersey guy. Best of luck to you, sir. I really appreciate you talking to me. You you may have be the politician who's been on this show the most, so it doesn't surprise me. I think the people saw uh the the numbers for our online poll before you came on it doesn't surprise me that you're getting the support of uh jersey matters viewers thanks again republican candidate for governor jack Cittarelli. coming up next Cittarelli is already far behind in his campaign to try and unseat governor murphy that's according to a new rutgers eagleton poll we'll talk to pollster ashley koning next <laughs>